This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. For animal lovers, by animal lovers. Myths are like a human coping mechanism for life occasionally being boring. And although sometimes there is a grain of truth within each fable, most of the time it's more like, this is fascinating and harmless, but I'm gonna write a blog post about how it lays eggs in your mouth when you're asleep, because I want attention. All animals are fascinating in some way or another, so there's really no reason for these next five stories to even exist. So I'm gonna bust them like Adam Savage and Jamie Heineman. My name is Jason Miller, and you're watching Five Weird Animal Facts. Number one on our list is the milk snake. This harmless colubrid has 24 subspecies found throughout North America. All of them are beautifully patterned, and occasionally they're colored to mimic the venomous coral snake. Milk snakes get their name from the myth that they steal cow's milk. The tale goes that a farmer would walk into his barn and see a milk snake dangling from the cow's udder. Here's why this is so wrong. The only animals that drink milk are mammals. Snakes are not mammals. That alone should debunk this myth. But I'll play devil's advocate for a minute and say, hey, maybe they got a taste for it. But do you really think that a cow would just kind of let a snake attach itself to its udder? If there's something with sharp teeth latched onto a cow's nipple, I don't think it's going to just be like, okay. She'd let you know real quick that something was very wrong. So how does a myth like this get started? Milk snakes, like many snakes, are rodent eaters, so they're often found in barns hunting mice. So I'm guessing the farmer just saw the milk snake in its barn with the cows and just put two and two together in the most ludicrous way possible. Myth number two, lemmings commit mass suicide by jumping off of cliffs. Lemmings are small, hamster-like rodents that live in arctic and tundra environments. The myth goes that lemmings migrating in large numbers would jump off of a cliff and into the ocean, effectively ending their lives. This story exists mainly due to the award-winning 1958 White Wilderness documentary made by Disney. The documentary showed footage of the rodents falling to their deaths, with narration stating that they are doing so because they hope to swim to land on the other side of the ocean. A Canadian Broadcasting Corporation documentary, Cruel Camera, found that the lemmings used for white wilderness were flown from Hudson Bay to Calgary, Alberta, Canada, where they did not jump off the cliff, but were in fact forced off the cliff by the camera crew. Good job, Disney. Myth number three is possibly the most widely believed myth on this list. We all heard it growing up, and I myself believed it when I was a kid. It states that if you find a baby bird that fell out of its nest, you shouldn't pick it up and help it because the mother bird will smell human scent on the baby and refuse to care for it. In reality, most birds have a very poor sense of smell and wouldn't even be able to tell if a human touched the baby. But before you go rescuing every baby bird that you see on the ground, remember that it might just be a fledgling learning how to fly. When a bird is old enough to leave the nest, it usually takes a couple of tries before they get the hang of flight. The best way to check if this is the case is to gently pick the bird up and attempt to get it to perch on your finger. If it has a good grip, then it's most likely ready to be on its own, in which case you should take it to a bush or shrub and let it hang out there out of harm's way until it's ready to fly. If the bird has no flight feathers or isn't able to grip your finger, try and find its nest, put it back, and walk away. Because Mama Bird is probably freaking out watching you from a distance. Number four on this list is a myth that I am embarrassed to say that I believed in entirely until a few weeks ago when I started researching it because I wanted to feature it on this show. The tale is told time and time again that the Nile crocodile has a symbiotic relationship with a bird known as the Egyptian plover. This little bird supposedly acts as the crocodile's dentist by sitting in its open mouth and eating parasites from between the reptile's teeth. This legend was created by the Greek philosopher Herodotus. Whether he was misinterpreting the croc's natural history or just wanted to screw with us is hard to say. I haven't gotten the chance to speak to him about it, but one thing is certain. Since Herodotus' account, Nile crocodiles and Egyptian plovers have never been documented exhibiting this behavior. You may be thinking, Jason, you big dummy, I just saw these pictures online. Well, this one is photoshopped and this one is from a dentist commercial, so, sorry. The final animal myth is a pretty nasty one. It states that earwigs get their name from the fact that they burrow into your ear and eat your brain. Let's logically break this one down, shall we? First of all, nothing is able to reach the brain via the ear because of this little thing called the eardrum. The eardrum is what separates the outer ear from the middle and inner ear, and would prevent the earwig from getting any deeper into your body. Secondly, brains make up roughly 0% of the earwig's diet. They're scavengers and omnivores, eating mostly decaying plant matter and the occasional small arthropod. There is plenty of food available for the earwig in its natural habitat, so crawling into a dude's ear and burrowing into his brain seems like a lot of unnecessary work. So then why are they called earwigs? When unfolded, the wings of this insect look very much like human ears. So the name may have originally just been ear wings, but there was a miscommunication. The guy who named this insect might have just had a cold the day he was talking about it to his colleagues. <laughs> yes, I'm going to call this the earwig. Okay, earwig. Dodo, earwig. Right, earwig. Thank you. No, wait. Thanks for watching. On Facebook last week, I asked you guys what the weirdest animal myth that you ever heard was. The best answer was Al Owens, who said, 
While I was in Louisiana collecting rattlesnakes, an old farmer told me to kill a chicken snake that was eating his chicks. He had to cut it into small pieces or it would come back to life and eat more chickens. Thanks for sharing, Al. It never ceases to amaze me how stupid some people can be when they're talking about snakes. If you want to participate in future social media fun and whatnot, make sure to like Five Weird Animal Facts on Facebook and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Miller's Wildlife. Also, let me know in the comments down below what animals and topics you'd like to see in future episodes. Make sure to subscribe to Animal Bites TV for more awesome animal things and stuff, and I will see you next Monday on Five Weird Animal Facts. I'm a wildlife rescuer, field expert, and conservationist. Welcome to Corey's Wild World. This is ABTV.